The tail Azteca spot butterfly became extirpated from Canada in the mid-90s and reappeared 10 years later on Demon Island after some heavy logging removed the forest and created meadow habitat. The butterfly larvae feeds on speedwell which grows in moist places, such as the ruts left by heavy machinery. However, forest succession is reclaiming the meadow habitat, which destroys the food plants of the butterfly. This led to the initiative to breed the species in a laboratory environment for reintroduction and augmentation in the wild. The facility has four rooms. What you are looking at is the lab where all the uh, technical work is done with the fridge and all other equipment. And the second room is a room where larvae are raised in under artificial lights, which is a feeding room. And the third room is the sunroom where we do the mating, which is uh, necessary with sunlight. And finally, the wintering room where the animals are in diapause. The Checker Spot Butterfly life cycle takes an entire year from butterfly to butterfly. In February, the larvae sleeps, it's called diapause, which will wake up in March and feed heavily to turn into a pupa and then into an adult in May. The eggs will be laid late May to June and then the larvae hatch in June and grow all the way to Insta 5 in August when they turn back into the sleeping mode called diapause again. The larvae are kept in the diapause room under clay pots to regulate humidity and temperature. A logger monitors it and we must maintain a minimum humidity at 40%. Larvae are checked frequently to see if they are healthy. However, they are not active and immobile. We feed three species of plants to the larvae. This is Veronica scutellata or Marsh speedwell. This is Plantago lanceolata. And this is Veronica sapillifolia or thyme leaf speedwell. Of the offered food plants, the young leaves of Veronica scutellata are the preferred food, as you can see. We prepare little bouquets of Plantago and Veronica and put these into custom-made vases which are filled with water to keep the food fresh. These are placed into the bin where the larvae are fed and also receive brown paper which they like to pupate uh, and we weigh those larvae on a daily basis and return them after weighing to the bin where the food is provided and we also provide extra moisture by adding 6 cc of water to maintain a minimum of 40% humidity, again mon monitored by the larva. The bins have double screens to avoid parasitic wasps from puncturing through the screen into the larvae and to lay their eggs in it which eventually will kill them. The larvae feed heavily until pupation, and in this case you see them in Insta 6, which is the last time they shed their skin, after which they will turn into pupae. The larvae stop feeding before pupation. They are about 3 centimeters long and hang themselves in a typical J position under the paper. You can see here also the last exoskeleton which would be the seventh skin attached to the point where the pupa is attached to the substrate. Every pupa is weighed and identified to maintain records of the matriline, that is, the mother. The pupae are stored in plastic containers awaiting a closure. The hatching of the butterflies falls usually into the month of May, which is called eclosure. 
The butterfly first must rest and expand its wings before it can take flight. This can take several minutes. All butterflies are weighed. Because we are able to tell the sexes by weight, females are always heavier. The sexes are told by looking at the posterior of the butterfly. The females have an oval pattern of bristles with an open center. The males have a closed pattern called claspers. Females are stored in plastic cups with paper lining in the fridge. They are fed by hand before mating. Males are held in transportation castles and they are fed on a daily basis by providing them with natural flowers, in this case English daisy, and also by feeding them by hand. We do that by stimulating them on flowers, like in this case the scabiosa, and then quickly offer them honey mixture, which is buckwheat and water mixture, one to three from a Q-tip. Males are kept in a screened enclosure and taken into the sunlight. Females are added to the enclosure and males will soon begin to copulate with the female. When the two animals are facing an opposite direction, copulation actually starts. It must be measured by time. We consider it successful when it is more than 50 minutes but less than three hours. Some wild females have been collected to add genetic diversity to the colony. These are captured in the field and barred for a short period of time. GPS recording is done and the butterflies are put into tubs. These are called oviposition tubs where they will lay their eggs as you can see under the underside of a plantago plant. A female might lay as many as 50 to 100 eggs. Once we have collected enough eggs, they will be released again to the wild. They are still gravid, still able to lay more eggs. Eggs are laid on the underside of leaves. They are at first yellow. Then they will turn into a brown color. And after that, close before hatching, in a silver gray color, when the head cap comes off and the larvae hatch. Eggs which are not fertile remain yellow. The little larvae will soon wander out onto the leaves of the food plant together. The daily routine starts with putting on rubber gloves and collecting food plants. Veronica are grown in the garden in beds. Fresh leaves are collected from Veronica as well as Plantago. They are bleached with 5% uh, household bleach, rinsed and spun dry for feeding. The keeper is now ready to take the larvae into the lab for feeding. The utensils which are used to handle the larvae are sterilized with isopropyl alcohol. The alcohol is then rinsed off. The lid is removed and the larvae are taken out of the container and placed in a fresh container with fresh paper. Larvae here are seen basking at the top of the lid and others are hidden inside the paper with the food plants remaining after feeding. The leftover food is removed and placed in a separate dish. It is important to look for larvae in the paper so none is overlooked. The paper then is inspected on both sides to see that no larvae are hiding anywhere. The all the debris is kept and inspected later for any overlooked larvae. The larvae are picked up by sweeping them with a soft watercolor brush onto a spatula made from a plastic margarine container.
leaves of the food plant are placed loosely in the container. Other methods is to create a little vase made from the casing of a syringe. It is very important to keep track of the genetic lines of the larvae. This is done by having the ID of it on a label and the label must be religiously moved from one cup to the next. We have created screen bottom cups. These are inserted into a normal cup to collect the frost. The frost falls through the bottom of the screen and stays away from the larvae. As the larvae grow, they turn into different instars, which means shedding their skin and changing their shape. The shedding should progress smoothly. The head cap is the first thing that's removed and the skin is shed just like a sock. Here the larvae is doing a dance to fluff up its bristles. We see an instar 3 and an instar 4. As they change, they get larger and have more bristles. This is an instar 4. And here we see instar 4 and instar 5. And in between, you see some exoskeletons. Once you reach instar 5, they're getting close to diapause. Here we see one larvae still active, although the cohorts are hidden in the paper. We remove the larvae that are still feeding so that we do not have extra frass in the container. They are separated in a separate container and given fresh leaves. Here you see the cohorts in diapause between the sheets of paper. We cut away the packet where the animals are dormant and put it into a clean cup. They may get active again as we move them, but they will soon find a place to web up and remain that way for the winter diapause. We took some larvae and let them grow up in a terrarium. This is a natural environment, and as you can see, they're feeding on the various plants that are in the terrarium, preferring speedwell. They grew very well, shed from one instar to the other, and eventually we're looking for sites for diapoding. This is the Insta 5, looking for a place to winter, for the winter sleep. We offer different materials for the larvae to choose a site for diapause, and common reed bundles were preferred. It can happen that the larvae become ill, in which case they do not develop properly and do not shed into the next instar. They are not responding and not curling up, which is a normal behavior when the larvae are healthy. They try to feed, but give up feeding and literally have no appetite. Another event that is not healthy is when the larvae has difficulty eclosing, that is, the butterfly to hatch from the larvae. This one has a lot of problems and in the end did not expand its wings. Although it is alive, uh, it will not survive and like this one dies. The most important steps is to create labels for each of the groups of larvae as to the genetic background. These labels were moved from one cup to the other and stay with them throughout their development. Other information is entered on a daily basis into a diary. Beyond that, we fill out forms for various aspects of their development. Our mission is to raise these animals in captivity and find better ways for husbandry so to have them forever in the wild.